Today on Sci Guys, quantum locking or flux pinning. Welcome to Sci Guys. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mark. And on today's episode, we'll be doing quantum locking or flux pinning. Thank you to Quantum Experience for donating the equipment for this episode. Thank you. Quantum locking or flux pinning is the phenomenon where a cooled superconductor is pinned within a magnetic field and will not reorient itself without outside assistance. The equipment you're going to need for this episode includes a quantum locking kit which contains strong earth magnets, a superconductor, and special tongs. We got ours donated by Quantum Experience. There's a link down below in the description if you'd like to get one for yourself. You'll also need a Pyrex beaker or metal bowl. Please do not use regular glass as it cannot handle the shock of the liquid nitrogen. And also you're gonna need a big container of liquid nitrogen. We got this from Praxair, but search online for a local distributor. Because we'll be dealing with liquid nitrogen in this episode, it's absolutely essential that you have parental supervision. The safety equipment we'll need are liquid nitrogen certified cryo gloves, as well as a full face shield and an apron or lab coat to protect from spills and splashes. In general, you should treat the liquid nitrogen like you would boiling water in terms of handling. The first step in our experiment is to fill our beaker with liquid nitrogen. Next, using our tongs, take the superconductor and put it in the liquid nitrogen until it is sufficiently cooled. Now that our superconductor is cooled, once again use your tongs to take it out of the liquid nitrogen and set it over top of your magnet. As the levitator enters the magnetic field, you'll feel resistance. Once the levitator is within the magnetic field, it will remain locked within space. If an exterior force is applied to the levitator, it will change position, and it will remain in that position until additional force is applied, or until it warms up losing its superconductivity. If we place the levitator into a cylindrical magnetic field, it will rotate following the magnetic field without friction. The levitator can be repositioned within this magnetic field. When it's repositioned, it'll continue to rotate without friction. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. The levitator in our experiment is made of superconducting sheets. The interesting thing about these sheets is that at room temperature, they're a poor electrical conductor. But when cooled below 90 Kelvin, or minus 183.15 Celsius, like when we place it in liquid nitrogen, they become superconductive. Superconductivity is a quantum state of matter with exactly zero electrical resistance. The magnets in our experiment each have a north and south pole. They have their own magnetic field, and they're laid out in an alternating pattern. Superconductors don't like magnetic fields, and normally, when they come in contact with a magnetic field, surface electrical currents are generated in the superconductor. These currents have their own magnetic field, which expels the magnetic field of the magnet from the inside of the superconductor. This is known as the Meissner effect. However, since our superconductor is extremely thin, the magnetic fields generated by the magnets will penetrate the superconductor in discrete quantum amounts. The quantum amounts of magnetic field that penetrate the superconductor are pressed into a cylindrical shape known as flux tubes. These tubes become trapped or pinned in place within the superconductor and are so small that around 100 billion can be found in the levitator. The trapped flux tubes hold the superconductor in place, preventing any spatial movement locking our superconductor in mid-air. The position of the levitator will not change, because any change would mean the realignment of the flux tubes, and this cannot happen without help. When we angle or move the levitator, the flux tubes shift and the quantum locking continues in the new position. This isn't simply levitation, it's locking, because when the platform is flipped upside down, the superconductor stays locked in place and doesn't fall. Well, that's it for quantum locking or flux pinning. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments below and subscribe for future episodes. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to this episode or about science in general, let us know in the comments below or message us on Facebook and we'll try to help you as best possible. Special thank you to all the subscribers who helped us reach this 10,000 goal. And thank you very much to Quantum Experience for donating the starter kit to help support this episode. You can get your starter kit at the link below in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye. Here at Sci Guys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, share a video or photo of them with us on our Facebook or Google Plus page. But remember to always ask your parents' permission before you share any photos or videos.